Hi everyone, this is Rami Marks, your Tangled Yogi out here in California. I am making this video because a few of my students were interested in being able to recreate this piece on their own at home. I also had some great feedback from a lot of the Certified Zen Tangle teachers on Facebook and saying that they were also interested in the class, so this is also for you. So what I have here is I have the original template for my class, and this was inspired by Hani Nura, and uh, she has a great uh, Instagram page called Full Moon Mosaic. You can check her out, and this was her, her template for this particular month. I wanted to let you know that I taught three of these classes, um, and so I wanted to show you how differently it came out in each class each time I chose to uh, handle the piece in a different way. And you can see just by going in with different colors how crazy cool did these come out. Pretty neat. So there they are in all their glory and we are going to do this particular tangle today. For our class, we are going to need a Micron PN, a pencil, and you can either use the, um, the Koi watering brush or you can use the Tombow uh, double-headed uh, paintbrush. I love this brush. This is now becoming quickly one of my favorite pens. So those three are gonna be great for you. And then the other thing is, if you're not comfortable using a compass, um, I, I'm not really great with them, you're gonna laugh. I made my circles with my lid of my Quaker Oats uh, a topper and I had a vitamin top and that's how I got my circles to be so smooth. So if you have things to make a circle with that would be helpful at this juncture. So I'm going to take those things off to the side here for a moment and we are going to take a minute to get comfortable in our chairs and take a moment to breathe. So allow yourself to find a comfortable seated position. Take in a nice deep breath. Let it go with a sigh. and feel your spine growing comfortably tall. Allow your eyes to close for a minute. Let your shoulders melt away from your ears. Let yourself relax in your chair. Soften in your jaw, soften in your tongue. Let your forehead relax. Taking in a nice deep breath right here. Letting it go with a sigh. Feeling yourself in a relaxed place before you begin your practice, period. And so before we begin our practice today, I wanna to share with you a quote that I found and it's by Charlie Peacock. And he says, it's not about creativity, it's about the person you're becoming while you're creating. And I like to think that those of us who practice Zen Tangle, not only are we creating beautiful works of art, but we're also relaxing and going into a very deep place to create. So I'm just let that simmer with you for a moment. Let's take in one more deep breath right here. Let it go with a sigh. And let's tangle. So I'm just gonna move these guys off to the side here. And I'm gonna start with a tile. Now, I didn't talk about the tiles before and I, I apologize for that. So um, if you have one of Rick and Maria's um, apprentice tiles, that's a great um, tile to use. I also have my own tiles that I made. Uh, this is called the Genesis tile. I love this tile because it's super smooth and it really takes, um, takes color pencil really well, great for coloring. So there is that off the cuff. So I'm just gonna actually make my template right in front of you so that you can see and then when you're ready, you can pause me and make your own template. So I've got a, a blank tile right here and I'm gonna, I'm gonna just come in nice and close for you to see. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my Quaker Oats guy right here and I'm gonna put my hand on him and I'm just gonna take my pencil and go around my Quaker Oats guy, just like so. I made sure it was pretty well centered. So that takes care of my first circle. And then I'm gonna drop in my little vitamin 
uh, jar here, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put him in there as well. And then that way, I now have my two circles for our class here. So if you need to go and scrounge around in your kitchen and find a way to start making those circles, go ahead and do so. I'm gonna pause right here for you. Okay, so we're back, and hopefully you have had a chance to do your uh, your circles here. I'm just gonna go ahead and, and start now with my, um, my pencil just for a moment. And so I want you to think very, um, I want you to think of this as you're barely touching the page with your pencil here. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna go ahead and find my place in the middle of each section here. So on the, on the top, on the bottom, and on the sides, I'm looking for where the middle is. And what we're gonna do is something I like to call blessing the bat. I took a ceramics class with a gentleman who um, was, he was really, really great. He was a Spanish, uh, Spanish gentleman. And he used to say that whenever we were throwing our, um, our bats down on the wheel, we were blessing the bat by putting a cross on the back of the wheel to make it suction cup to the actual wheel itself. So I like to call this blessing the tile or blessing the bat here. So that's what we have. And so what I've just done is I've just made those lines going across. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead now and do that on the diagonals as well. And you can see that I'm barely, barely letting my pencil touch the page here. Um, it's just a reference point for me so that when I'm doing the tangles, I have a point of reference. So you can see that I'm taking my time and really just letting that line up. And I hope that you can see my, my lines there. So if you need to pause right here, this is a great place to do it and, um, and catch up with me and, and slice up your, your circle. So now that you've had a chance to slice up your circle, we're gonna do something that I call overdrawing. And overdrawing is pretty self-explanatory, but I wanna be very clear about what I'm doing. A lot of the time my students like to jump ahead of me and um, that's because I, I'm a little bit uh, slower in my instruction and what will happen is, is that they will jump ahead of me and end up making um, a detour into a place that they didn't expect to go to. Now, you and I both know that oops opportunities happen all the time and that's just fine and we've ended up with some really great, great things, but for this particular class, just stick with me for a moment. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna overdraw and I'm right here on that middle circle right here and I'm just taking my pen and I'm just going over the string that I created with my pencil here. And you can see that I'm gonna turn the tile to make it easy for my hands. And I'm taking my time, cleaning up those lines. And then I'll just rejoin that nice and clean. And then I'll go over here and I'll do the same. So I'm just looking for my circle, and you can see there's a little bit of a pencil mark on the outside of um, my circle. I'm okay with that. Um, one of the things that I like to tell my students about pencil lines and whatnot, a couple of years ago I went to the um, museum, uh, Contemporary Art Museum in, um, in New York, and I really got close to one of Marc Chagall's paintings, and you could see the pencil lines under the paint the places where he had sketched in all of the good stuff that he puts in there. So what I like to say to people is you don't need an eraser. Leaving in those pencil lines means you're leaving in all that really great goodness. So there's that. So I've gone ahead and I've overdrawn. And if you need to pause me right here, this is a good spot to pause me and do your overdraw. And then um, when you're ready, just hit play again. 
But for those of you who are with me, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to continue here. So you can see that I still have the pencil lines that are going through, and this is going to be a nice reference point for me um, to do my work. So the first tangle that we're going to do, this is called Bluster, and it's a variation on Bluster. I did it as a, um, a triquetra, I think is what it's called. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and in the, in the middle here, right where all my lines are joining, I'm just going to draw a small circle, and this is the size of a pea here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to think of a bay leaf or a petal, and on either side of that pencil line, I'm making that first petal. Now see this line right here? Let me get nice and close for you. See this line right here? I'm going to do the same thing right there. So I'm just going to go in and I'm gonna put that petal right there. And then I'm gonna come over to the other side. See this line right here? I'm gonna go in right here, and I'm gonna do the same thing. So now we basically have that triquetra that um, is so cool. Now do you see these lines right here? These are our pencil lines that we had before. So we're going to add a little bit of fescue in there. And for those of you who don't know what fescue is, fescue is a little line and you put a little teardrop on the end of it and you puddle in that teardrop and that's basically fescue right there. And I think they spell fescue, F-E-S, uh, I think it's Q-U-E or C-U-E, fescue. So there's that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn over my tile and I'm just going to turn my tile a little bit because I'm left-handed so this is going to help me. And I'm in this line right here and then just watch. I'm going to come out and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put that teardrop right there and I'm going to puddle in right in there. Puddling means I'm just letting ink flow onto the page. And then I'm going ahead and I'm putting another one right there. So now he kind of looks like he's got little arms sticking out, doesn't he? And then I'm going to do a final one right here and just add that in. So there we go. So now we're going to add the bluster to it. And some of you may actually see this as flux too. Um, so it, it could be either or, depending on what feels right for you. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to jump off of that petal and I'm going to go one and two. And then I'll do it on the other side. I'm going to go one and two. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to build up towards my little fescues here. So I'm just going to add a little bit more to it. So I'm going to add a three and a four right there. Now I'm going to turn my tile and I'm going to do the same thing right here. So you see this petal? It's the same thing as this petal, but I'm just doing it over here. One and two, so I'll just need two right here. And then I'll go over to this guy right on this side. One and two. Oh, it's getting a little close. I'll smush that guy in there, no big deal. And then I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna go over here. And then I'll do one more on the side, one and two. So now I have it all filled in in the center and it looks really pretty, I think. Almost looks like lotus flowers. So I'm gonna go back in to these petals right here. And if you need to pause just for a minute and just catch up with us, this might be a great place to do that. And for those of you who are just gonna continue on with me, here we go. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make a little teardrop and let it sit right in on that line. Did you see how I did that? And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna puddle in that teardrop right there. I'm gonna turn now to this petal right here. I'm gonna make a little puddle or a little teardrop right there, puddle that in. 
and then I'm going to go to this guy right over here. And I'm going to do the same thing. And notice I'm doing it all on the right side. So we want to have these all on the right side. So that now, when I turn it around, you can really see that triquetra working out quite nicely. So once you have that, we're going to start to move on to the next part. But I'm going to let you catch up with me. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so we're back, and we're going to start to work with the, the spokes on the wheel here. Now, what that's going to look like is, you see how we have these pencil marks right here? So what we're going to do is we're going to overdraw on those pencil marks, like so. So I'm just going to come in. Now notice I'm not going into the central wheel. I'm just going to go around, like so. And we're just making the spokes on the wheel. Going all the way around. And then once you've gone all the way around, we're going to start to build the petals of our piece here. Now if you need to pause and just get all of your uh, we, your spokes in your wheel done, that's fine. Or if you're with me and you just want to carry on, then uh, carry on with me. So what we're going to do is we are going to think of the uh, the Hershey's Kiss for a minute, how it has kind of a slim top and kind of a, a larger bottom here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in on the top of one side of the spoke and I'm just going to go out build the bottom of that Hershey's Kiss and notice where I'm landing. I'm landing in this corner. So I started here, I built out the half shape of the Hershey's Kiss and I landed right here. I'm going to turn my tile and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going from this corner, building out, making the Hershey's Kiss like shape and dropping in. I'm going to turn again. I'm doing the same thing. I'm just dropping down and in. And you can see that I'm only working on one side of that spoke. It's going all the way around. And you know, this was the ongoing joke in my classes. By the time we got to the last one, we really had gotten the Hershey's Kiss shape down. <laughs> so some people are like, well, some of them are good and some of them are not so good. And that was just fine. I thought it was kind of funny that by the time we were all finished with it, we are all pretty good at making that Hershey's Kiss shape. So there's that. So if you need to pause here and just finish up your Hershey's Kisses, this is a great place to pause. And then for those of you who are going to carry on with me, we're going to start by making the tangle for Sistar. That's one of the new pretty tangles that's been out um, that I've really been enjoying. And I can try to do a demo really quick of Sistar. So if you had a petal like so, you would maybe make a seed and then add a line to it. And then you would aura down the side of each part of Sistar, and it's really this gorgeous little tangle, but I'm going to show you how we're going to do it here. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start right here. You can see that I've got a little dot that I'm going to drop in towards the center and another little dot right here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to carry that line up and I'm going to carry this line down so that they look like petals of a flower or a leaf. And then We'll puddle in. You can see that I'm moving my pen in a circular like motion. This is going to keep you from getting those white scratchy lines that sometimes people get when they puddle. So see how my pen is moving in that circular like motion. That's just filling it in really, really nicely. The other tip that I want to tell you about is if you barely let your pen touch the page, the ink is going to flow so much more easily. Almost like you're letting the pen tickle the page. It's that light. I'm going to come out here now and I'm going to start to aura. Notice that I'm auraing nice and tightly. Now my body isn't tightening up, just the line is tightening up. So if you find yourself holding your breath here, see if you can relax into it. Isn't that pretty? 
It's amazing how certain things so simple can add so much elegance to a piece. I'll do it one more time with you. So I'm going to go ahead and drop two little dots right here towards the center. One line going up, one line going down, puddling in. using that circular-like motion so that you don't get the white scratchy lines. The pen is barely touching the page. You're just letting the ink flow right out of the pen. And then we go ahead and we aura. Nice and tight. Breath is flowing. We're relaxed. So we're gonna go around and do the whole thing. I'm gonna pause right here and I'll come back when mine's all done too. So go around and do just these petals right here. So you can see where my, my pen is just pointing to, just those petals. Okay, I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so we're back and you can see that I've had a chance to go all the way around and add in the sistar to the piece itself. So we're gonna to start to work in these spaces right here. These little negative spaces, they're kind of interesting to me. Uh, I thought they kind of looked like uh, goldfish, um, you know, how this would be the tail and this would be the head of it, but you, you might not see that and that's just fine too. Uh, I, see, I see shapes now everywhere, thanks Untangle. <laughs> All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a dot down here and then watch, I'm gonna go ahead and I am Aura-ing the line of the petal. Can you see that? And then I'm aura-ing this line right here. So I'm just going to go around and see how I'm doing it nice and tight. I'll turn my page to make it nice and clean and easy for my hand. And it creates a, that really nice, interesting shape. I'll do it again just so that you can see it. And then I'll let you do it on your own. So I'm just going to put a dot down right here. I'm going in nice and tight creating that line, going down the other side. So just take your time with this, there's no rush. You know, the nicer the line is, the more beautiful the tangle will be. So you're gonna go around to each spot and do that in each spot, and I'll see you in a minute, okay? Okay, so you can see that I've had a chance to go all the way around and do that aura in each of those negative spaces here. So the next part that we're gonna come across is I did a variation on Tattoo, which is a, a Zen Tangle that, um, that I saw online that was being used for the Full Moon Mosaic. So Tattoo looks like this, and you can see that it's got the circle in the center and the lines that are carrying out, and it's aurid on each side. Now here it has a square. Ours, we're not gonna do the square, and I'll, and I'll show you what I mean in, in a second. So I'm gonna take that away, and we're gonna start to work with this particular area right here. And I'm gonna blow this up nice and big for you so you can see it here. So here we go. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come into this area and ours, we're not gonna have a circle in the middle so much as we're gonna have a seed in the middle. And I'll show you what I mean. So I'm just gonna jump out here and make that kind of soft, almost like a half moon there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna carry the line all the way to the back line. See how that's going all the way to here? Now I'm gonna aura that line. So it's just a variation on tattoo. We're just using one of the arms of tattoo, okay? I'm gonna do it again in the next one so you can see how we're gonna carry this out. So I'm going right back here to the little head of the fish here. And then I'm gonna jump out and make that little half moon. And then I will go ahead and I will make a line. I will aura the line on both sides. Now you might notice yourself holding your breath on this one. Um, see if you can let the breath just flow here. It's pretty easy to, to get very determined when you're doing an aura. So I'm just going around like so, all right? 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pause and I will finish up the rest of mine and I'm gonna have you finish up the rest of yours, okay? I'll see you in a minute. Don't forget to breathe. Okay, so you can see that I've had a chance to go all the way around and add in that arm of tattoo in there. It really looks beautiful. I'm always amazed when I add that particular piece to this particular tangle, how, how nicely that looks. Um, so let's see here. We are now looking at this and thinking, wow, that is so pretty. What can we do about those corners? Those corners look so naked. So we are gonna do something about those corners. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn my tile a little bit so it's easy for my hand. And then just watch me here. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna aura. I'm gonna maybe drop down right here. And I'm just gonna aura this line right here. And you can see that I'm going nice and tightly through there. And before I get to the halfway point, I'm gonna pause. See how there's my halfway dot right there? I'm gonna pause. And then I'm gonna come right here and I'm gonna aura the outside line of my tile here. You can see I'm turning my tile and making it very easy for my hand. I'm filling that in. And now I'm gonna go inside the aura itself and I'm gonna do the same thing. So now I'm auraing the aura itself on the inside. Getting nice and close. You can see that I'm really taking my time. And one last time, I'm gonna aura inside the aura. Now, some of you are probably saying, there's no room for that, lady, you're crazy. Well, I may be crazy, but there may just be enough room for you to squeeze one in there. So you can see that I've got three auras right there. I'm gonna do that in each of my corners. Okay, so go around and do that in each of your corners. I'm gonna do this one more time for you so you can see. So I'm just before the halfway point and I'm just dropping my pen down. I'm oaring out. I stop right before the halfway point right there. And now I'm going ahead and I'm oaring the outside of my tile. Now I'll come inside and I'll do one more aura. Taking my time. Last one right here. Aura inside the aura. And you'll see the method to my madness in a minute. All right, so you're gonna go ahead and do that in those two corners. I'll see you in a minute. All right, so you can see that I've had a chance to go all the way around through the corners here. And so now, here comes the method to my madness a little bit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start to go into those corners and we're gonna add the tattoo into those corners here. So let me show you, I'm gonna go right in here. So most of you have done uh, the tangle in Zeppel. And um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna round off right here and right here. And just for those of you who haven't done in Zeppel before, let me just flip this over real quick. So in Zeppel, if you were doing kind of a, a, a crazy in Zeppel, you would have like pickup sticks where your lines were kind of every which way from Tuesday. And in Zeppel, you just round off your edges and you end up with a really nice kind of circle smushed into a square there. So, and you would do it in each one and it would be really pretty. It's a, it's a lovely uh, pattern. I'll, I'll just give you another idea of how this works here. So I'll just kind of go around and add a little bit of Inzeppel here. So you can see. So that's a basic idea of what Inzeppel is. And hopefully that was clear enough for you guys, but I don't want to focus on it too, too much. So I'm just going back in here and you can see that I'm rounding in these corners right here and right here. It's pretty round up here already, so I'm not going to do that. And I'm going to go ahead and puddle into those two places that I just rounded off. So lately, I have to say that I have been enamored with using more black in my Zen tangles. So you'll see me using a lot more black in this one as well. So what we're gonna do is in the center of our little blob that we have here, 
we're gonna make that circle and then we're gonna go ahead and let the arms of the circle come in. And then instead of adding that square that Tattoo has, what we're gonna do is we're just going to aura with what we've got. And I feel like it really has a Native American quality to it. Uh, they are the masters of pattern making. Um, if you ever go and look on uh, Pinterest at beautiful Native American uh, pottery and weaving, they just know the master, uh, the mastery of creating gorgeous uh, patterns. I'm very enamored with that type of work. So you can see I'm just going around, oop, and I forgot to add my little inzeppels there, and that's okay. I can just go right in and throw those little guys in there. So that's one of the things about Zentangle is it's about being flexible to whatever comes up as you're going around. So if you, if you forget to do something, you can just go back and, and finish up. So I'm just gonna go back in here one more time, a little circle, line, line, and then I'm oraing around like so. You can see some of these are bigger and some of these are smaller, and that's just okay. Last one right here. And if at any time you need to pause me here, go ahead and do so. My friend Stephanie says that I go very, very quickly. So I think I go really slow. And you see, I forgot to end up again. So there it is. Hi, Stephanie. <laughs> All right. So there you have it. There's our corners. And we're going to get ready to do color uh, in the next part. So take your time, finish up those corners, and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so we're back, and I want you to start thinking about the kind of colors that you wanna see in your piece. Now, a lot of people are a little bit frightened of trying color, and I wanna alleviate your fear around using color. So I just want you to pick out your favorite color out of your toolbox, and once you've got that, um, I want to just show you a little bit about your favorite color here. So for me, I'm going to go ahead with uh, my favorite color right now, which happens to be something called, uh, uh, I believe it's called Dahlia Flower. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it over. And what I want you to know about a color is you have your light, you have your medium, and you have your darkest tension. So when you're working with color, I want you to think about that every single time. When you're laying down color, am I going with my light tension, my medium tension, or my dark tension? Sometimes people tend to go a little hog wild with color, and they start with their darkest tension first. And once you've done that, it's hard to come back from it because then you don't get variation on color, and that's what makes color so interesting. So another thing that I want to talk about with color is if you choose a color that has light viscosity, and what that means is the body of the color doesn't have a lot of dimension. So here's a yellow, for example. I'm just going to go ahead and lay down the light. There's my medium, and there's my dark. Now, when you're working with this, sometimes you might need a little bit more uh, spark. And so you might go ahead and choose a little bit of an orange, which is a complementary color, and add that right next to it. And I'm gonna do some demonstrations in this video of how to um, add a little bit of depth to a color that has very light viscosity to it, okay? So let's begin. I'm gonna actually start with this beautiful yellow color. I was kinda smitten with it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start in the beginning or right where we started with our triketra here. So I'm gonna lay down in the lightest tension possible that yellow. And you can see that my pencil is moving in a circular motion. Can you see that? 
that's gonna help me so that I don't get scratchy lines. I'm getting nice smooth lines going right over this. And I'm sure you're looking at it going, Rami, I can see that pencil line right underneath that yellow. I don't care. I'm really thinking about Chagall and how he left everything right in there. That's just fine with me. So you don't need to erase that and you won't even see it in the end anyway. So I'm gonna go right over here into this petal as well and bringing that in there. And then I'll go over here and I'll do the same. So I've got those three petals, right? And I've got that nice smooth texture going. Now I'm gonna use that medium tension that I was talking to you about. And you can see it's, it's helpful and I'm going about halfway up, but it doesn't give me the pop that I'm looking for. Now see how these are all close to the center? I'm gonna do that the same way right here. I'm only going about halfway out and then I'll go halfway out over here as well. So you can see, okay, that that was that was enough pigment, but it wasn't what I was going for. I was going for something that had a little bit more pop. So I'm gonna go in now with my orange, and I'm just gonna add a little bit more orange to it. And you can see that that's already sparking it. It's already starting to give it some depth. And I'm gonna go over here, and I'm gonna do the same thing right in here. You can see it really does give it really a nice spark. I love seeing orange and yellow together. And actually, here's where I want to stop and say that one of my um, my friendly CZTs, Terry, is getting into doing color. And so, Terry, here's a color pairing that I really like. You had asked me about that. So yellow and orange together like this for shading, really great. Now, if you really want to make it pop, you could grab a little bit of red, and you can notice right here, I'm just going to bring in that red, but I'm not gonna go too far into the orange. Can you see that? I'm just going in about halfway through the orange and letting that red jump in there. And I'm using the light tension with the red. I'm not doing heavy tension, just a light tension. See how that worked? Really gave it a pop. So go ahead and pick your colors and let's go ahead and do those petals and I'll see you in a minute. Just those three petals. Okay, so hopefully you have those three petals down. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna choose a contrasting color to go around those three petals right here. And you can see that I have that purple in my hand here. So here's why I wanna show you how using a singular color can be very effective as well if it's got a nice viscosity to it. So I've got this really beautiful purple and I'm gonna go in and I'm using the lightest tension that I can, so my pencil is barely scratching the page. Now notice how far back I am on my pencil too. I'm not up at the top like this. I'm back here like this. And so that helps me to get a little bit lighter pressure on the pencil itself. And so you can go into, I'll just go and do this whole side for you so that you can really get an idea of where we're going with this here. So I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna fill in these three right here and you can see I'm using that really nice light tension. I'm going in that circular like motion to get the smokiness that I'm looking for. Once I've got that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add some shading to it. So you can see this line right here. This line is making it so that this petal looks like it's sitting on top of this petal and this petal is sitting on top of this one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start by laying down now some of that medium tension that I was talking about earlier in our uh, video here. You can see I'm leaving the lightness right here but I'm just adding a little bit of that medium tension. Now I'm gonna go back with heavier tension right along that line here and notice the pop that that just gave me off of that petal. Isn't that pretty? Same thing right here. See how this yellow petal would be on top of this purple petal? So I would come in right here. I would do a medium tension here. Leave your light. You always need to have some light here. 
That's important, otherwise you don't get the contrast that you're looking for. And then now I'm gonna use that heavy tension and really make this spark. Oh, it's so pretty, the yellow with the purple. Hey Terry, there's another pairing that I like, yellow with purple. So now I'm just gonna turn and I'm gonna do this right here. See how I'm moving in that circular like motion? Look at that pencil, it's moving in a circle. There's my light, I'm gonna leave that light alone and I'm gonna go back in with that heavier tension and then I'm just gonna let it fade up a little bit into that lighter medium tension so I don't get a line of demarcation there. Isn't that so pretty how that turned out? So we're gonna do the same thing on all of these different petals here. So go ahead and go around. I'll just do one more demo. So for this side, you know, because we're in the Zentangle world, you can have shadows every which way from Tuesday. We're not really following the, the rules of um, nature here. And I think that's what's so fun about Zentangles. You can really do your own thing. So on this side, I'm gonna do the shadow on this side. So I'll go in. I'm gonna do that medium tension. Notice how I'm leaving the light over here. And now I'm gonna go in with that darker tension. See, now notice there, there's a line. Can you see that heavy, heavy line that's right there? Now I'm gonna blend it up a little bit. So I'm going into that medium tension. I'm working my pencil in a circular-like motion, and that helps me to fade that line out a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna go around and we're gonna do all these little petals in the same fashion. I'll see you in a minute. Take a breath, enjoy the color. This is the best part. It's my favorite part. All right, so we're back and hopefully you've had a chance to go all the way around with your, uh, with your petals here. So a lot of my students will tell you that they have seen me being very interested in graphite with color lately. Um, and you can do graphite with color. You can take one of your little pencils and use that for the next part. Or if you have a, uh, what do they call this? They call this a cool gray, and this is made uh, by Prisma. So I'm left-handed, and a lot of the time if I use graphite, I end up wearing it on the side of my hand. Um, I know a lot of left-handy uh, people have trouble doing uh, graphite stuff because of that. So I tend to use my Prisma gray color pencil, but if you're right-handed, you probably won't have that problem. So what I'm actually gonna do on this one is I'm gonna add a little bit of gray around around the, uh, the petals themselves, and I'm really hoping that that's gonna make this pop. So what I'm doing is I'm just going in, let me blow this up for you a little bit. I'm just going in, and I am going to lay that graphite right down, or I use the gray and, and just lay the gray right down. So you can use your, your regular pencil for this. That's not a problem. Go for it. And you can see I'm just going around and trying to fill in in a very smoky way around those petals here, just like so. Once you've had a chance to go all the way around with the gray, we're gonna start to add some shading and some depth to it. See how I'm still working with that pencil and working it in a circular like motion? And you can see that I'm far back on the pencil too. I'm not up at the top, I'm not here, I'm back here. I'm just laying that down. There it is. So now, once I've gotten that gray down, you can really see that it made all that other color pop, didn't it? Boy, I really love the way that looks, it's great. So now I'll go in here and I'll start to add that medium tension that we were talking about. Coming in through here. Notice that I'm gonna leave the end light. See how I did that? I'm gonna do the same thing over here. So I'm just going about halfway up with that medium tension. And then I'll do the same thing over here.
And that starts to really bring the depth in towards the center. Notice how it's pulling you into the center. And then in here, I'll use my heaviest tension and go about halfway out on that medium tension. Still using that circular like motion. And that's what we're gonna do for the center there. If you need to pause right here, go ahead and pause and finish up your center. Otherwise, for the rest of you, we are gonna carry on. One of the things that I like to do with my color is I like to tell a story overall with the color. So we started with that beautiful yellow, orange, and red combo in here, and that's gonna go in my petals right here. So you can see which ones I'm talking about. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by going in and laying down that yellow. I'll pull this in for you so you can really see it. So I'm just taking that yellow and I'm using that really nice light tension, circular motion, really soft, right? Now, if you're using a purple or a blue, you're just fine uh, staying in the singular uh, singular color range. That's totally fine. But because I chose a yellow, uh, I'm gonna have to use some different colors here. So I have that, that yellow. Now I'm gonna switch over into that orange color and I'm just gonna start to add that medium tension. Now, if you are using a purple or a blue or a green, now is where you're just applying a little bit more tension onto your pencil to give you that heavier color that you're looking for. And you can see that I'm just starting to blend out into that orange and notice, or rather into that yellow, and notice how it's just gonna fade into the light there. I might just add a little bit more smokiness to that just so that I don't get a line of demarcation. And then finally to add our heaviest tension, I'll go in here and add that really nice poppy red. Now, if you're using like a, a light blue and you wanna have a little bit more pop to it, you could pick up a navy blue and use your navy blue right on the line just where I'm going right now. And if you're using like a light lavender, you could pick up a darker um, purple or a violet and use it like that. And I'm just gonna show you kind of a um, an explanation of that just for a second here. So. If you're using singular colors, you can see in the first one, I just used singular colors. I had a really pretty turquoise, and now I have a darker blue right here along that line. And then the same thing can be said for right here. I had that really pretty light pink, and I took a little bit of red and brought that in along that line as well. So those are some examples of that. So I'm just gonna go around now and do the same thing in each of those petals, okay? You go ahead and do the same and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so you can see that I've had the chance to go all the way around now with those three colors and wow, what pop we got, huh? Pretty, pretty cool. So we're gonna start to work now in these exterior pieces right here which is gonna be really fun. So I'm gonna actually be using two colors in those areas. I'm gonna be using my purple and I'm gonna be using my gray. So I'm gonna start with the purple first because I like seeing uh, the purple right next to the orange and the, um, and the yellow. So I'm gonna start right here and I'm just gonna make a little dot so that you can see where I plan on putting all of that purple. See how I'm doing that? It's just staying in the interior pieces. I'm just gonna make that a little bit bigger so that you can see that. So I'm just gonna be doing that in the interior pieces. So what I'm up to is we're gonna start again with that very, very light tension, going in the circular fashion, filling that all in. And now watch, I'm going along the outside of our aura here, and I'm starting to add that medium tension. 
still working with the circular like motion in the pencil here. Going about halfway into the light. See how I've got light here still? We really want to make sure that we maintain that light. That's very important. And then finally now, I'm going to go with that heavy, heavy tension here. And I'm just going to make that arrow glow. It almost looks like an arrow to me, so I'm just going to go with that. You can see how really beautiful that is. Isn't it gorgeous? I love that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go around into all of these little areas right here and we're gonna do the same exact thing, okay? So I'm gonna pause right here and I'll meet you in a minute. All right, so you can see that I've had a chance to go all the way around the piece with that purple and it's really starting to come alive. It's quite, quite beautiful, those colors together. You know, I, I love to find out what's going to happen when I start out on a piece. You know, it's as much of a, a journey for me as it is for you when I'm laying down these colors. I'm not exactly sure what it's going to turn out to be, but it turns out really great. So uh, that's why I love colors so much. So now I'm going to go back into that graphite that we were working with before. And we're going to be working right here on the exterior of these uh, pieces. So we're going to do the same exact thing that we did here over here and I'll just do a quick demo for you so that you can go on your own and do your thing. So I'm just starting in with that graphite or that gray, whichever one you have handy. Either will do. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make that darker tension right along the line here. Now, here's what I want to say about using graphite. Is you could use a, uh, a Trishon with your graphite. I'm going to do a demo with the graphite just so that you can see how to handle it if you want to do that. So I've got my little graphite pencil here and I'm just going to go in right here and I'll start in with the graphite. You could use a Trishon. I'm not sure I have one in my uh, pencil box right now. So I might just have to freehand it here. You know, if you don't have a Tershawn at home, Q-tips are also really great uh, to use. They're pretty easy um, to handle as well. Ah, oh, I do have a Tershawn. Fantastic. So what I'm going to do is I'll just go in. Right now what I did was I just went in light, and now I'm going to go in and I'm going to use my Tershawn and blend it out. And then I'll go back in with that heavier tension right along the line here. So now what I'm going to do is I'll go back in with my Trishon and I'll blend it out. Now notice I'm letting it go medium tension so I don't have to worry about doing the medium tension here. And notice how I'm leaving the light on the outside so pretty. So if you want to do it with graphite, you can do it with graphite, or if you want to do it with the gray, you can do it with the gray. So we're going to go all the way around our circle, and I'll see you in a minute. Have fun, and don't forget to breathe. Relax your shoulders. Just let yourself be in the moment. This is your zen. You know where you're going. You know what you're doing. Have a good time. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so I'm back and you can see that I've had a chance to go all the way around with the gray. It's really starting to come along here. We are headed into the end of our, uh, our practice here. We only have a couple more things to do. So one of the things that I really like to do is, like I said before, I like to carry my story out and out and out. Um, when I'm carrying the color, it helps the eye to jump around the piece and it makes it more appealing for people um, or appealing for myself. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry that yellow, orange, and red into my little circles here. So you can see I'm right here in these little circles or the seedlings that they could be. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in with my light tension with the yellow. And I'm laying that down nicely. Going in now with my orange. 
And I'm gonna go about halfway up with the orange. So I'm leaving it at the tip, I'm leaving it yellow. So I'm getting that orange to lay down in there, working in that circular-like motion. Let me see if I can make that a little bit bigger for you. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the red now and just add a little bit of the red to it. And that's really gonna make it so beautiful. Isn't that lovely? That contrast just really does it for me. So go around into all of your little seedlings and add that combination in there or whatever your combination is. So this, where your trichara is, that's what you're gonna carry out into here, okay? All right, I'll see you in a minute, have fun. All right, so here we are. I've had a chance to go all the way around there. Boy, this is really coming out great. I think I might like this one the best out of all of them that I've done. I guess the more you practice, the better you get, right? So we are going to finish up with these really great corners here that we have, and we'll come back to the center at the very last. But we're gonna finish up right in here first. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the colors that I have in my uh, piece in the corners. So I will use the purple, I will use the gray, and um, probably use the orange too. Let's see how this is gonna work here. I think we'll probably just use two. So let's do the orange and the purple, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in with my orange and lay that down. And I'm gonna blow this up for you so you can see it. All right, so I'm gonna use the orange in this corner and I'm gonna use the orange in this corner right here so that I have kind of this corresponding feeling to it, right? And then I will go in here and I will add my purple and my purple. Now notice I haven't done my shading yet. I'm just doing the color, I'm just laying down the color. So now I'll come in here with a little bit of that orange to give it the depth. And you can see that I'm just really hugging that line in there. Because you know, you may not have much, much room to wiggle around in there. And so I'm going in. And just laying down those shadows in there. Isn't that so pretty? I think that's really beautiful. So we're gonna do that in all four corners of our piece. Ooh, let's get that to go down. So you can see I've got him here, so I'm gonna go around to each four corners and do the exact same thing. All right, and then we will finish up our final part the next time around. So go ahead and do your corners, and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, final stretch right here. We're in it, people. This is really coming along. How beautiful is that? So what we're gonna do, I know that you've been thinking the whole time, hey, what about those Tombow uh, pens or the brush pens? What's going on with that lady? <laughs> I always save the best for last, come on. So what we're gonna do with the Tombow pens is, um, you know, sometimes puddling can be a chore if it's too big of a place to puddle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be using my, um, my Tombow pen and I'm going to go into these corners where I have the auras. So just watch me here. I'm barely letting my, my pen touch the page, but you can already see that it's really easy for me to get in there and um, and puddle in those areas and wait until you see what this black is gonna do for the piece. I think this really just makes the piece um, personally. So I'm just going around into the corners here. And I'm being very cautious and careful because I wanna make sure that I'm giving a little bit of care to those lines. And 
Isn't that so cool? Look at how that just jumps right off the page. It's like, shazam, I'm here and I'm the corner. Yay me. Now, um, so you're gonna go around and you're gonna do that in all four corners. Now, the other thing that I wanna say to you is, when we get into here, I'm just gonna go ahead and make a little uh, half moon right there. And then I'll go ahead and I'll puddle in that area so that it really jumps out. And I might even just go ahead and let that come over the top there. And that just really makes it glow, I think. So go ahead and do your corners. And for those of you who don't have a brush pen, um, you know, I know Micron makes a really nice brush pen, uh, but I'm just gonna show you up close so that if you wanna go and uh, order this Tombow pen, I really loved this. It was really a joy for me to work with. It's called the ABT and it's the N9, uh, N15. Um, and it's a great, uh, uh, brush pen. Also, Rick and Maria have this really great pen that I that I love that I got when I was at my teacher training, and this is a great brush pen as well. Um, so you can pick these up anywhere. And if you don't have those things and you really need to use something, Sharpie is always a last resort, but you can always use it. Sharpies are great, and they have really nice depth, and they fill up the space. The only thing I want to say about Sharpie is they bleed a little bit, so you got to be really, really careful when you let that touch the page. Um, so uh, it's my last resort when I need to puddle, uh, but they do work, and I know a lot of people swear by them too. So uh, go ahead and do your corners. I'll do one more for you so that you can really see where I was working. So let's see here. We're right here, and I'm just going to go in just on the outer one. I'm not going on the one that uh, that's close to the inner piece. I'm going to the outer piece here. And you can see I'm just being very careful and going around the outer edge. And you know, the great thing about using the black is you can clean up some of your lines if your lines were a little wiggly. It's, it's really nice to, um, to forgive those lines, which is great. So you can see I'm just going in there and finishing that up. Trying to clean up those lines just a little bit. Isn't that fun? Look at that whole side of the piece is just electrified by that black. So go ahead and finish up and I'll see you in a minute. All right, so hopefully you've had a chance to go all the way around and clean up your, your lines on the outside a little bit. And I think that this really came out quite nicely for uh, for today. I hope you've enjoyed this. I know this is a longer video and there were a lot of steps in this video, but I think that this was a really, really great chance to explore color and how to use color with Zentangle. So you can always go and visit my, uh, my Facebook page, which is Tangled Yogi on Facebook. And, um, and join us, join our community. Yep, we would love to have you. And you can check out my other videos on uh, YouTube. My YouTube channel is Tangled Yogi, which is all one word, and 333 is the number right behind it. And I'm Rami Marks. I'm, tang I'm your Tangled Yogi, and I hope you had a great time doing this with me. I surely enjoyed having uh, the opportunity to teach you. Have a great day.